Okay, time for another class. <laughs> everybody, get, everybody get themselves situated. Uh, I don't know about you, but it's like massive storm coming across the lake here right now. Wow, the ice is going to melt real soon. Oh, nice cup of tea. Getting all cozy. All right, birds of prey. Love birds of prey. Um, big background. I'm going to make myself a little bit bigger here. There we go. Uh, Birds of Prey. Uh, so I have a um, big background in Birds of Prey. I used to work as the Raptor Rehabilitator at Wildlife Center. Um, we took care of injured uh, Birds of Prey and a bunch of other animals too. And I banded birds, uh, banded uh, hawks and flu hawks like, uh, like with the falconeers and stuff like that. Um, yeah, for many, many years. And uh, man, it was, it was amazing. It was an amazing job. Learned so much. And just got to love uh, the species. All right, so uh, they go into categories. So you look at the occipiters, and they're the fast flying, not falcon yet, not as fast as falcons, but they're the, the occipiters, they're the birds that go after bir birds at your bird feeder. Um, and uh, they fly like flap, 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 soar, flap, 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 soar. And they go for small things like, again, birds. So uh, you also have the falcons, which are a step up, like the merlins and peregrine falcons, deer falcons. Um, and yeah, uh, fantastic. Uh, you got the uh, buteos, which are the rodent eaters. So basically they're more brusque uh, bird of prey. They'll perch and jump as opposed to fly and soar to catch something. And red tail hawks, cooper's hawks, things like that. You got the eagles, totally separate, right? And then you got the osprey, which I don't think we're covering yet. I think I'll do a totally different thing on osprey because uh, they're a totally different species. That's really cool. That's worth a whole class in itself. Um, and you got the scavengers, the turkey vulture. Okay. Um, so I'm going to start off with the sharp shin hawk. I, you know, I mean, I'm going to start off with the two probably most difficult ones, the sharp shin hawk, uh, hawk and the cooper's hawk, because they look pretty similar. And it, man, it's not easy to tell the difference apart, especially when they're flying above you. I mean, a picture like this, yeah, you can, but you don't see them like this. <laughs> well, you do if you take that photo, I guess. But um, yeah, so the, uh, the sharp shin hawk, uh, it's got that really rusty color to its chest, um, blackish top to it. Um, if you look at the, when I get to the Coopers, the Coopers has more of a flat cap, bl black, uh, gray cap. Um, it has that rusty brass too. Um, but, and this is hard to tell really, uh, but the tail of the sharp shin hawk um, is slightly notched, whereas the Coopers hawk is roundish. Okay. And the Coopers hawk, once I get to it, you'll see it's bigger. It's about the size of a crow and this guy's about this big. Sharp shin hawk is probably the, the one you're going to see going after your birds or your brood feeder. Okay, uh, he's more common. Both are really common in urban areas, more so in the woods. In fact, I, I don't think I've even seen one in the woods. They're always in, in the city hunting birds. If you look at uh, uh, the juvenile, this is where it gets really difficult. Is he, he or she, whatever, does not, because they both, both male and female look similar, uh, do not have that breast. Um, why they're called sharp shin hawks, though, by the way, are the chicken legs. Sharp shin meaning that, wait, what's the textbook says? A flattened, um, flattened, thin leg shanks. But to me, it looks like a chicken leg. <laughs> okay, and so that's the the juvenile. What's really cool is the juvenile does not have the red eye. They don't get the red eye until three or four, maybe five years into uh, maturity. And uh, man, I had a great job. I, I had a, a lot of people still to this day will take these from the nest or they'll catch them in the wild and use them for hunting or sell them for a lot of money. That is illegal, <laughs> okay? You can actually have a bird of prey to hunt with, but it has to have a permit. And those most likely, unless you have a special permit, are born in captivity. Some hunters don't really like that because the ones born in capt captivity are not as good hunters as the wild birds, um, yin and yang, right? So, so uh, yeah, so basically I, I would have a job to go in and someone would say, yeah, here's my permit. And I, uh, the conservation officer would say, okay, Kevin, um, check this bird out. Tell me if he's lying or not. And more than once, um, the person would say, yeah, I have a juvenile or I have a mature. And I just look at the eye and I went, yeah, that eye is not red. So therefore you're lying. And then, yeah, jail time, big time for those guys. Uh, man, it's huge fines for that. But they were making tons of money illegally. It was more than drug dealing. Um, anyway, I could go on too, too much about that stuff. So yeah, here's a great one of Sherp Shinhawk in flight. Here, see the color? Oh yeah, the tail is broad, uh, is sort of barred, so it's it's a uh, um, black, gray, black, gray, and you can see that in flight, pretty obvious. Okay, so let's go to the Coopers. 
And, and yes, we are going to have a test. The test will not be by sound, it will be by sight. And um, I hope you're paying attention. Everybody wake up, get the coffee going in. The tea is what I'm having. So see the difference, right? I mean, a lot bigger bird. Uh, it's the size of a crow or even a bit bigger. Um, not as common. Actually, uh, around here, I don't know, I've seen more coopers and sheriff shins, but they will go after the birds, your bird feeder. See the, the gray cap on his head and look at that red eye, big time red eye. So that's an adult. And here's the immature yellow eye. But look at the chicken legs. I think that's a classic. And look at the barred tail right down here. Let me get a picture of that. See the barred tail? Okay. So that's a Cooper's hawk. Now the next one, oh, Kevin. Oh, my dog is getting upset when I do this stuff. Say something like that. Is the northern? I love this bird. Northern. Northern goshawk. So he he's an occipiter, a lot bigger. Yeah. Just a little bit smaller than, than a red tailed hawk. So he's a pretty big bird. Amazing flyers. I have seen one fly around a tree after a squirrel and catch it while flying around the tree. Freaking amazing. So the, the key characteristics um, uh, he's more robust than the sharp center coopers, obviously. He's a bit bigger. Uh, but look at the crown on him that white eyebrow with a crown on him. Really prominent red eye. Gray molt to him. Um, nice black color. Uh, he also has the uh, barred tail. And oh man, you got to see. Wow, is it really storming outside? Anyway, uh, so yeah, th these guys, well, lots of birds do this. Red tail hawk does this as well, but Goss are sort of known for it. So for mating ritual, they will fly way up uh, and the male will start soaring and the female will soaring, soar below it. And then they'll grab each other and then plummet to the earth. And then just the last moment, they'll fly up. And it, it's amazing to watch. Incredible birds. Really uncommon to see, they do not like people. Uh, so they're, I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure they're conifer nesting. So they'll be in a conifer wood, uh, forest instead of a woodlot. Um, and yeah, they're very secretive birds. I love them. All right. Ah, Northern Kestrel. You guys see these along the hydro uh, lines in the farmer's fields and stuff like that. Northern Kestrel, American Kestrel, <laughs> they're the same thing. Anyway, no one as Kestrel. You can't mistake this bird. There's nothing else that looks like it, but it's only about this big, right? Eats lots of grasshoppers, tiny mice, and uh, just perches on the hydro line and then plummets down. And, uh, but again, it is a soarer, so it is part of the Merlin. But look at that, that bar uh, face on it. The male is more vibrant color than the female, which is unusual because usually in, in, the, in birds of prey, male and female look identical. There just might be a difference in size. Usually the female is bigger than the male. Um, so yeah, really loud. Uh, I won't touch you on, on, on um, sound, but. Okay, now it's hailing it, well, big time. Okay, so really loud. I had one, uh, to, I would take to schools when I worked at the Wildlife Center. Um, it was born in captivity. Um, and so I would just take along, um, what was his name? Oh no, 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 I ended up my ferret killed it by accident one day. That wasn't good, that's a long story. But uh, yeah, I would just take it on, on a Jess and bring it in, he would fly around and everybody would woo, It'd be really cool. All right, I'm gonna to have to stop here for a bit because this storm is out of control. Okay, right, I'll get back to you. Yikes. Okay, I'm back. It's calmed down a bit. Uh, part of my driveway's being flushed away though. <laughs> Man, it's gonna be a lot of flooding after this. It just hit big time. All right, Kestrel, great birds, love them. Very, very common. All right, we got old Merlin, I tell you. You, you know this bird more than you think if you go on canoe trips. Uh, this is the one that you always hear behind your campsite getting all upset. Listen to its call. Dog recognizes that from camping. Remember that? 
spike behind the campsites, we should go in, Clarny, uh, I'm talking about Ontario, um, Boundary Waters, Quetico, yeah. Fantastic bird, they are a miniature falcon, okay. Um, the male is more vibrant than the female, the female is more like the color of a sparrow, the male color here, and it's about this big, okay. So, uh, yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, it's got the the white eyebrow um, and the molten breast and the barred tail. Oh, I yeah. Here's a key characteristic. They when they fly, they're the only bird of prey that I know of um, that fly like like this, not like this. When you see them in flight, yeah, really kind of cool. Uh, I remember one day I was thinking, wait a minute, and actually my boss was saying, well, that's what that's a merlin. How can you tell? Wait, it's fine. All right. Next one. Peregrine right, falcon. Beautiful bird. Okay. So when I worked at Wireless and it was back in the 80s, um, well, when I started that back then, um, I worked later on in there. But, but basically, yeah, they weren't doing so well because of pesticides and they were uh, getting through the eggs and then killing the young, the pesticide was. And um, so, yeah, we did an uh, introductory program where we raised the falcons in captivity, then let them go. And um, it worked to set the falcons like people because we fed them. So, they would fly up to people looking for food and stuff. So we had to sort of switch it up and make sure they didn't have an association with humans. And after a while, it did really work. A lot of them actually ended up nesting in, in the cities, uh, more so than the cliffs of, of, of parks and things like that. But yeah, and then we got rid of the pesticides, DDT, and then uh, that helped a lot a long time ago. So the peregrine falcon, it's got the sideburn. Okay, so that's the difference between all the other falcons. It's got the sideburn, um, really fast wing beat, a little bit more robust bird than the Merlin. And oh, just got a note from my girlfriend. Hello, Christine. Sorry, I can't talk right now. I'm in class. <laughs> Take off <laughs> to the great white north. <laughs> Take off. It's a beautiful place to be. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the average uh, uh, speed they can go at is 50 kilometers an hour. That's 30 miles per hour. Uh, they can um, reach up to 100 kilometers an hour, 70 miles an hour. But when they swoop down, they can go to, was it 320 kilometers an hour, which is 200 miles an hour? Like really fast birds, incredible. The wings swing out again to pull a brain numbing 10 G's bottom turn that would cause a mere human to black out. Incredible. All right, now we've done that. We're going to go to the videos. And this one you'll see all the time and think it, it's another it's another red tail hawk or something. And no, it is not. It is the Northern Harrier, which when I was in birding, we'd call the marsh hawk. I'm not sure they're called marsh hawks anymore. They're called they were called marsh hawks because you'll see them in a the marsh. They're very low lying birds. They'll fly really low. Um, they nest on the ground. A lot of farmers by accident when they do the hay will chop them all up because they'll they'll nest in the field. Like, and uh, yeah, I think mortality is not good that, that way. Um, but yeah, key characteristic, yes, they got a swooshed in face, but the key char characteristic is this thing right here. And look for it, because they're flying around right now. I saw two yesterday. They got the diaper, the white, white rump, okay? Swooshed in the face, white rump, flying low to the ground. And uh, you can't mistake the white rump, okay? Get back to that. I wonder if they have a video of it in plate. Yeah, let's watch this because you'll see the rump I'm talking about. Low lying again, squished in face. See that white rump? He's got a diaper. He's wearing a diaper. <laughs> and, uh, um, yeah, nesting on granite, when I did a study on them, um, I set up a blind with one nesting in, in a marsh. And uh, one thing I noticed throughout that time was that the guys are nesting on the ground. This is my hypothesis anyway. The, the female would do a call and the male would take off uh, to do some hunting, catch something. And then the male would do a call, the female would listen and take off. And then they, they would fly and then they would circle uh, like this. And then the male would drop the chipmunk or whatever caught the female would catch it in the air and then fly back down to the nest the male would never come down to the nest with the food 
and my hypothesis is, is that because it was a ground nester, they were doing that so that predators would not find the nest. I think, I think it's hypothesis. Hypothesis. Uh oh. Uh oh. And yeah, you probably know a better way to do this than what I'm doing. Oh, Kevin. Oh, here we go. Than what I'm doing here, but it, I'm, it's, I'm new to the Zoom thing, so be patient. Okay, one of the most common birds, Budio, it's a red tailed hawk, uh, really robust bird. Um, it's got the speckled chest. Uh, the big thing is the red tail, but it does not get the red tail until it's mature. So, I wonder if they have an immature photo of it. I don't know. Hmm. I know they don't get the red tail hawk until a uh, red tail uh, they get the red tail until they reach maturity. So um, yeah, uh, but pretty robust bird and um, red tail hawks are red tail hawks. They're so common. They're along the highways. They're, they're, they're really used to humans, but they'll plunge down and even plunge down into the snow to get a mouse in the winter time. Um, they, uh, hmm. I know they have a belly band. This thing here. And I, so if it's juvenile, it will still have that belly band, but some red tail hawks have a really vibrant one, some don't. It's all a genetic mix up. Um, yeah, so, but red tail hawk. Oh, yeah, the call, the call. So, when you're watching Walt Disney and stuff like that, it's you, you'll see eagles all the time and they'll have this call. Unbelievable. I don't know how many times I've been watching movies, uh, nature movies, or whatever, Daniel Boone and all those other Walt Disney classics, and they'll have a, an eagle soaring and they'll have the red tail hawk calling. Like, like, come on. Like, what, I had a job doing that once though. I worked in film where I'd go to the studio in Toronto and these guys would do nature films and then they'd have all this footage. And then this is the day before um, uh, Google and things like that. Uh, Dan Gibson, he, he actually was a, an amazing recorder of, of animal uh, or bird calls and things like that. And we do it with a big dish uh, in his canoe and then record it on a, on a recorder. So we'd have all that recording on a box and a bunch of other recordings too from other people. And I would look at the habitat, like a bear would be walking through the stream. And then the producer goes, well, you know, we want some bird calls in there, but we want the birds that should be in that habitat. And that was my job. I'd push the button of all the bird species and you put all the calls in. Awesome. All right, Rental Hawk. Next one. All these jobs I had to just proof that I had a full time job in my life. <laughs> Rod winged hawk. I want to put this one in because a lot of codgers uh, see this guy. I'm going to go to right, right to this one because this is the most common thing you'll see. Very medium sized bird, smaller than the red tail, larger than the, um, the falcons. Um, really prominent uh, barred, barred tail. You, you see these guys all the time. I mean, they're, they're, they're all the way up to James Bay, whatever. They're very common there too, but I know people in Algonquin or Cottage Country, Muskoka and stuff like that or, or whatever, um, will see this bird. And yes, really prominent barred tail. Uh, it's about the size of a crow. It's a little bit small. Well, yeah, smaller than a raven. Look at that. Now the sun's coming out. This is just weird. So it's the barred tail that I would say is the most obvious part of that bird. Ah, bald eagles. More scavengers than hunters, I'll tell you that. Um, and they're on the endangered species list, but I tell you the guys I work with, um, they actually say there's enough of them right now. They should take them off the list, but it's too much paperwork to get to take them off the list. list uh, they're doing really quite well. There's lots of them all across Canada and the United States as well. They're scavengers. They, they go mostly in groups. And um, see, and yeah, they do not get the white head or the white tail until they're three to five years old. So um, a juvenile will will actually not have a white head, not a bald head. <laughs> um, and uh, um, the white tail. So their call is very unique. Almost like a laughter again, like the other things we've talked about.
you know, just like that color here. So yeah, I, I think everybody kind of knows what a bald eagle looks like, but let's look at look at the golden eagle. More solitary bird, they, they don't not gather in groups at all. Um, to distinguish, well, they don't have the white head, but you might say, well, is that a juvenile uh, a bald eagle or is it a gold eagle? Well, two ways to tell the difference part, the size. They're friggin' massive. These things have a six foot wingspan, like massive birds. Um, I mean, up in the north, they'll take a, a young caribou down feet. That's how big these things are, right? But they also have that golden neck. That's the key characteristic of a, of a golden eagle, the golden hue on, on the neck. Uh, really birds that you don't mess around with. I mean, uh, I got one guy once, so the one guy, uh, they, they called, called me in, my boss too, and they said, okay, the conservation officer said, okay, this guy says that he has had this uh, golden eagle from, from uh, captivity from a, from a juvenile and he raised it. And uh, he goes, how can we prove that he didn't? Uh, I sort of said, well, let him go in the cage and feed it. Um, because if it was a wild bird, he wouldn't be able to do that. And the guy refused and then it, sure enough, it was a wild bird. Like that, that eagle would have went nuts on him. And uh, so that's how we caught him. Uh, I remember uh, in uh, Scotland, uh, my daughter, I think she was five at the time and we're going portaging through the, the locks. And I went back to get the canoe and I said, look, you don't have to go with me. There's no predators here that can kill you. There's no bears or nothing, whatever. So what, what, what you know, what? and then I went back and it came back and I thought, actually a golden eagle could take her down, <laughs> but she, she was fine. She was actually, when I came back, she was dancing in the fen, singing Scottish tunes and stuff like that. Land of the Haggis, home of the big fight, where the mighty she wander the trees, blue lakes, no blue locks, in Rocky Hills, I really turned once more. She was fun. I just saw a jeer falcon during that trip too. That was amazing. Okay, uh, we're getting close here. I think the last one. Scavengers. Okay, turkey vultures. Um, so the turkey vultures are very common now up north, um, but when I first started studying them back in the mid 80s, uh, they were very uncommon. In fact, I got a job studying them because nobody knew anything about them. And uh, really cool is that they, they have a very large wingspan. So when they get agitated by a predator, they'll actually vomit to reduce their weight. So when they fly, they can take off quicker. Uh, really kind of cool. Uh, <laughs> Except for when one of the boss guy a turkey vulture vomit in his face. That was it was comical. Well, for me it was comical. Anyway, uh, turkey vultures. So when I studied them, I, I put myself in a blind again, and I put bait out for them. And I'm thinking, why are they not coming down? I mean, they can't see me. Everything's all hidden. There's no way they can see me. And I thought, well, wait a minute. No, they actually smell their food because they, they eat dead stuff. So, uh, I mean, nowadays you can get the little liquid stuff that make you smell like a rotten animal, but I would get rotten animals and put them around me to make sure they didn't smell the human. And they would fly down, and we did a lot of studies. And my hypothesis with the, these guys is that they have a red head that has no feathers on it, or when they're immature, they have a black head. But those colors are ultraviolet rays of the sun are attracted more to those colors. So because they gorge their, their food, and the food is dead, it's got maggots on them, so they'd have maggots on their head and the maggots would actually be able to fall off their head easily. But the coolest thing was their feet. So their feet, uh, the maggots will start crawling up their feet and their anus rotates and it, it, it shoots down whitewash that's very acidic. So they, they literally burn off or wash off the maggots off their legs. It's really kind of cool. You know, I'm blabbing. But the most distinguishing feature, um, see if they, when they're flying, when you look up and you, you're wondering if it's a, an eagle or a hawk or a turkey vulture, turkey vulture has V-shaped pattern in its, wing, in, in, in its wings. So it soars around like this. So where the, uh, the eagles and buteos and all that, flat, okay? So turkey vulture, anything else is that, all right? And then when you see them up close, you, you can tell. We came around the corner and uh, there was a turkey vulture sitting up on the rock, so we were, you know, getting pretty close and looking at it, and uh, and then at the last minute he flew off. But then, what came into view was uh, a dead carcass, uh, what uh, looks like a moose on just on the shore there. 
and there was uh, bald eagles, immature bald eagles, and probably almost a dozen turkey vultures uh, all uh, taking turns uh, uh, cleaning up that carcass. So uh, nature uh, does have its waste disposal systems, I guess. Uh, yeah, I used to have one at the wildlife center that used to show the he had a wounded wing, broken wing, never fixed. So he was he was with us forever, and I would take him out for shows, and he'd walk behind me like, oh, "Okay, Kevin," and Bleh, throw up. And <laughs> all right, are you ready for the test? What I did, I I put a bunch of um, uh, photos together, random shots from Google. So I probably can't mon monetize this <laughs> video, I guess. But anyway, I'm doing this for the, my students eventually. Anyway, so. I'm blabbing. All right, uh, get a piece of paper and pen and, or your laptops or whatever, and I'm going to randomly show you some uh, birds of prey and list them and see how well you do. Awesome. Okay, you ready for the test? So, sepiters, falcons, beauties, eagles, osprey, scavengers. We didn't cover the osprey, we will later. Uh, and kites, I didn't do that as well. Um, a yeah, totally different habitat for me, so just kept to the others. All right. Are you ready? It's not gonna be easy. If you're gonna vomit like a turkey vulture, do it now. <laughs> okay, number one, he is an occipiter. Uh, I'll tell you right now, it's either a Cooper's hawk or a sharp shinned. Um, for size wise, he is smaller than a crow. Uh, so when you're looking at him for size wise. And um, yeah, the one in the middle is a juvenile because it has no Red, red eye, but this guy down below is probably a better shot. He's the, the adult. So number two, this is either uh, Cooper's or Broadwing. I tell you, he is about the size of a crow. So he is bigger than the one you just saw. Uh, cap on him, gray blackish cap, rusty breast, okay, chicken legs, his tail is round, whereas the other one was wedged. That's that's a tough one, but yeah. And yeah, just like the other one, he'll be around your bird feeding, bird feeder, harassing your birds. Number three, a lot bigger, robust bird, um, but st still an occipiter, uh, more shy. Very key characteristic, especially in in, in the uh, the adult, is that white eyebrow um, and that mask that grayish molt, fleckin, fleckish molt on his chest, barred tail as well, and amazing flyer. Okay. Little guy, beep, 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 um, up in the, the, the hydro lines and uh, jumps down for grasshoppers. Male is more vibrant than the female, but basically, yeah, they've got that, that face, uh, that undistinguishable face and color. You can't get that one wrong. You just have to remember what's called. I wave my magic wand. Mm. <laughs> uh, what was that? Camelot? No, no. Anyway, I'm, I'm trying to give it away here. But anyway, this is not a peregrine falcon. He's a, he's um, imitation, imitate, imitation, no, imitated. Oh, he's a miniature. Uh, peregrine falcon. So he's the one you hear yapping away um, behind you. That's a female right there. And um, yeah, doesn't have the sideburns. So it can't be a peregrine falcon. It's got to be something else. And there was a wizard back in the day. Hmm. All right. I think I already gave this guy away, but basically, yeah, he's that, that fly, flying bird goes really quickly and he's got the sideburns, okay? Uh, wasn't doing so well because of DDT, but now we, we fixed that and they're doing quite well. Lovely birds. This is the guy, I think I'm gonna have a picture of him. Uh, no, shoot, I don't. Oh, this is a stupid picture. So he's the diaper bird. He's got the white bum, okay? Um, actually, I'll show a little video. I'll cut it in here so you can see that. He's got the white bum, the smushed in face. Um, he flies low to the ground. He's a ground nester. Okay, and I'll accept both the slang term that they used to be called and the one they're called now. Because I think I went on and on about the other. 
I'm going to slip right to here. Okay, that's the adult. Um, the other is, is juvenile. This is uh, one of the beautios. I know what I'm doing. Now I just figured out why sometimes you can hear me, sometimes you can't. When I put my hand down on the clicker, my hand's on the, over the microphone. Lovely. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that, that's uh, uh, beautiful. But look at the tail. What color is the tail? It's a hawk with a tail that's colored. Interesting. That's the juvenile as well. All right, this guy, medium size uh, one, smaller than the red tail, really common up in cottage country in Algonquin, really prominent bars on its tail. Okay, that's, that's the giveaway. Hmm, wonder if he shaves his head in the morning and puts shine on it. <laughs> All right, that's, that's, that's the next one. Uh, I tell you right now, though, the one on the left is a juvenile. The one on the right is a is a is a adult. So see the difference? Interesting. Next one, really big bird, a massive bird. I can tell you, it's an eagle. Well, is it the golden eagle or is it the bald eagle? And um, well, he's really big, and he has this golden hue neck. Hmm. <laughs> on the back. <laughs> Here he is in flight. Here he's in flight again. Beautiful bird. And the last one, V-shaped. He's a scavenger. Red head with no feathers on it. Poops down his leg. There's a lot of birds do that, by the way. Uh, great blue herons when they're in the nest will uh, poop um, down when a raccoon's coming up, it'll poop them right in the eye. I, when I had uh, Fred, uh, my red-tailed hawk, I didn't tell any stories about Fred, my red-tailed hawk. So I had Fred, uh, a hawk, I'll show some pictures. Um, I used to take him to schools and, and do programs with him. And I remember one kid running up and the principal's like, oh no, is Fred gonna attack? I went, not by his claws. And Fred turned around and aimed, like he, they're really good aiming at their, with their, their anus and boom, splash, just whitewash all in his eyes. <laughs> Wasn't funny. Uh, yeah, I had a red tail hawk. So what happened with that was um, the lion safari, I think it was at the time, were raising or tried to raise bald eagles in captivity to help them out because that was the DDT issue at the time. Uh, but for some reason, the, the adults would uh, eat their own young when they were born uh, in captivity. So they're like, gosh, we got to get an adult that didn't do that. And so uh, we had a permit to get red tail hawk eggs because they're a dime a dozen. And we would put those eggs in with the adult um, uh, eagle. And then one pair of eagles decided not to eat the young. So we decided to use them. And then, you know, they said, okay, now we have a red-tailed hawk, a baby red-tailed hawk. What do we do with it? So I got a permit for it, raise it on my own, and then would take it all around to all schools and stuff like that. And I showed, would dress up as Dr. Nature. You know, so I, I had a job for many years doing that. And yeah, Fred the hawk and um, really, really good hawk. So Oh, Fred, I miss Fred. All right, so that's it. That's the test. Okay, we're gonna take it up. Are you ready? Okay. Right, let me turn this off here. We'll just stop the screen. There we go. Okay, we're gonna take it up. Number one was the sharp shin hawk. And yes, if you haven't figured this out, I did keep them in order just to make it a little bit easier for you. Use a scatter them all up but i don't want to stretch you out i want you to feel confident about your species id uh number one was sharp shin hawk number two was the cooper's hawk number three was the northern goss hawk number four was a northern kestrel or i think what some people call american kestrel number five was the merlin i hope you got that hint the wizard number six was the peregrine falcon Number seven was a Northern Harrier or a Marsh Hawk. I'll accept both. Or if you had both, you're special. Next one was the Red Tail Hawk. Next one is the Broad Wing Hawk. And we had the Bald Eagle, the Golden Eagle, and the last one, Turkey Vulture. Okay, mark your papers, give me your score. And yeah, I think next time we'll do owls or, or more bird calls, uh, depending, because um, the birds are all coming back now. We'll do some mammal ID, fish ID, 
And yeah, I hope you're, you're liking these. I mean, I have to do this for my students because uh, they can't go back to school right now. So uh, I'm, you know, thanks for letting me experiment on you. Uh, I am improving with the Zoom thing, uh, I think. And uh, yeah, I, I'll probably be figuring out far better ways to do this than actually what I've done in the last three. But hope you're having fun with it. Have a good day.